When you talk to Christians about eating pork, eating pigs, it, they always bring up the same old, same old excuses. And I'm telling you something, this video is about to debunk it. talk to Christians about eating pigs. They always say, well, Jesus said, whatever enters the mouth does not defile a man, but what comes out of a mouth defiles a man. Now, once again, I mean, how many times do we have to say this? When you read a passage in scripture, you got to read it in context. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not just talking about reading the verses before and after. I'm talking about knowing the culture. I'm talking about knowing uh, the whole entire scope of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, talking about everything. I mean, that's the, that's the thing that Satan uses against, uh, against uh, the truth, is he picks out a passage here, a passage there, without taking the entire scope of Scripture. We should believe and obey all of Scripture. You know, when Jesus was tempted, Satan said, it is written. But Jesus said, it is also written. So Satan would like to take this one passage out or these few passages here and there to try to nullify other passages, to try to abrogate other passages. This is devilish. This is deceptive. Take it all. We need to realize what Jesus said. It is also written, okay? When we read something in Scripture, God is not a... You know, God doesn't have a mental problem. He doesn't say one thing and then says something else to just, you know, to shoot down what he said before. No, it's all the Word of God, all forever settled in heaven. But let's talk about a few things. Number one, when Jesus said, though, you know, that which goes into a man through his mouth doesn't defile him, but that which comes out of a man through his mouth defiles him, in context, okay? There's a few different levels of context here. First of all, if you were to look at all of the different Gospels, now don't just look at just one Gospel, look at every Gospel because every one of the Gospels gives you a little bit more information. It gives you a little bit more of the context. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees who are very strict with washing their hands, okay? Out of their mouth comes blasphemies. Out of their mouth comes all these evil things and evil accusations and all kinds of stuff comes out of their mouth, evil speaking, but they're so concerned about washing their hands, okay? So Jesus was in context saying, you know what, don't be so concerned about washing your hands. That's not what defiles you. It's what, what's coming out of your mouth is what's defiling you. Jesus was not talking in the context of eating snakes or rabbits or pigs. He was talking about in the context of washing your hands, okay? And he was talking about spiritual defilement, not physical defilement, okay? So, I mean, certain things can defile you spiritually, you know, and then there are other things that can defile you naturally. Your natural body can be defiled by lots of things. If you don't think that, if you think that you can just put anything into your mouth and it wouldn't affect you, it wouldn't be bad for you, then I would seriously you know, advise you to go talk to your doctor about that. There are a lot of things that you can eat, consume, that are not good for you not good for you at all. And God knows best. He, God knows better than any medical doctor. God knows best. He made the body, okay? So number one, Jesus was not talking about pigs. He was talking about washing your hands. He was not talking about physical defilement. He was talking about spiritual defilement. He was talking to a group of Pharisees who were just speaking all kinds of things they shouldn't be speaking, defiling themselves with what's coming out of their mouth but yet they're so concerned about washing their hands, which really isn't even a commandment in the, in the Bible at all, okay? So Jesus was just setting that straight. Number two, people like to say, you know, it says in the book of Acts that uh, God gave uh, Peter a vision and, 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 you know, and all these unclean animals was shown to Peter on a sheet and, and, and God said, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, I, no way would I ever do that. That's against your word, oh God. That's against that's unclean. What you said is unclean. Now, uh, people use that. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. People use that to uh, justify their consumption of pigs. Okay, so it's obvious. 
that God was talking about the Gentiles. You see, back in those days, in that culture, in that context, in that mindset, the Gentiles, those people who were not Jews, were considered to be unclean animals, okay? They were considered to be unclean animals. What God was showing Peter is that by the atonement, by faith, these Gentiles can be made righteous. They can be cleaned up, okay, by faith. You know, by faith, they can be saved. God can take this Gentile, unclean animal, so to speak, and save this person. That is what that vision is all about. There's no, there's no two ways about it. That's what it was all about. Not about eating pigs, okay? It wasn't a literal thing. We have no evidence whatsoever that Peter went out after that and said, okay, you know, fry me up some bacon. But first of all, there'd be no pigs in the area. And who, I mean, in that, again, think about it. In that day, in that age, in that context, there'd be no pigs, there'd be no bacon, there'd be no pork. He'd have to leave, he'd have to leave and go to some Gentile land in order to do it. Like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. God was showing Peter that the Gentiles can be saved, the Gentiles can be cleaned up. God was not talking about cleaning up pigs through the cross, okay? He was not talking about Jesus saving or, you know, saving pigs or saving snakes, okay? He was not talking about doing that. He was not talking about God making something that's unclean, clean in that sense. He was talking about making someone, a person who is unclean, clean by the faith of Messiah, okay? That's what it's all about, okay? It's amazing how people use any, just about anything to justify their sin. Now, number three, I know people would say, what well, says in Colossians, Paul said to the church of Col in, in Colossae, you know, don't let anybody judge you in what you eat, you know, your new moons and festivals and Sabbaths and, and all this kind of stuff. So what some people think, you know, some people think that Paul is saying, well, you know, don't let anybody judge you for not you know, celebrating the, the, the feasts of the Lord. Don't let anybody judge you for what you eat because you eat pigs. Ridiculous. Again, you got to know the culture. You got to know the context, okay? The, the city of Colossae was known for its asceticism. There were, asceticism was, was just, it just permeated society in that day. What is asceticism? You may say, it is the belief that any kind of festival, any kind of feasting is wrong in God's sight, okay? It's the belief that you, you shouldn't be eating anything savory or tasting. You shouldn't be doing any kind of celebration, feast, festivals, anything like that. Because it's the idea that you must always afflict yourself, always eat the, the most, uh, you know, the most tasteless dishes and, and don't celebrate, don't have any festivals, don't do anything, don't do anything like that. You must deny yourself. You must, you know, you must um, afflict yourself. That's what asceticism is, okay? So in that culture, all these people around the church in, in Colossae believed in not, they, I mean, they believed that you should not have, you know, festivals, you should not have celebrations. You should not celebrate, you know, anything, be it the Sabbath or new moon, or you should not have any kind of feast or, you know, anything you eat like that. They believed that they, they didn't believe in that because of the asceticism they were steeped in. It would make no sense for Paul to say to the church of Colossae, the church in, in you know, the Colossians, uh, you know, don't let anybody judge you uh, for not doing it because they, of course they wouldn't be judging them for not doing it because they don't believe in doing it. In context, okay, you look in, in, in the book of Acts, you got to understand that the church, the first century church, obeyed all of the feasts of the Lord, and obeyed the dietary laws of God, obeyed the laws of God as much as they could, okay? This is why Paul had to say to the church in, Col in Colossae, don't let anybody judge you for obeying the Sabbaths. Don't let anybody judge you for obeying the new moons. Don't let anybody judge you for obeying and, and observing the feasts of the Lord. Because we know, basically, this is what, it, if you look at the context, if you look at the culture, basically what Paul was saying to them is, I know that you're in a, in a culture that, don't, that doesn't believe in doing this stuff, but I know that you do. So don't let anybody judge you for doing it. So that that particular passage in Colossians is actually proof that the church actually did obey the Sabbaths, did observe the new moons, did observe the, the festivals of the Lord, did observe the, 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 the dietary commandments of God, and all of that stuff. 
because, I mean, Paul had to, to tell them, don't let anybody judge you for this, okay? The fact of the matter is, God didn't make dietary laws for nothing. He just didn't go up, he just didn't one day, you know, in heaven just say, well, I'm just going to make all these dietary commands just because, just because I just feel like just, just barking out commandments. That's not what he did it for. He did it because he is the creator. He, he created your body. He knows what's best for your body. And he created those commandments for you, for you. As Jesus said, the commandments are made for men, not men for the commandments. So those commandments are made for you. Why is it? I mean, it's no, it, it's no wonder why so many Christians are dying from heart attack and stroke and cancer and all this kind of stuff nowadays. They're not obeying. They're not going by the instruction manual. They're not, they're not, they're not treating their body right. They're not going, they're not, uh, they're not obeying the instructions. They're not, they're not following the guidelines. What, can, what else can you expect but sickness and disease? I mean, what else can you expect but death? God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to observe and follow His guidelines in regards to the dietary laws that He gave you.